Good morning, everyone. I'm Yoon Kimball, and on behalf of the Wichita Central County Coordinated Community Response Team, hereafter referred to as the local CCR, I want to welcome everyone to StepStone as we release our Domestic and Sexual Violence Community Safety Assessment Report. The members of the assessment team to my left are present to today to answer questions. Our multidisciplinary team consists of Carrie McGregor, the Director of Catholic Charities Harbor House, Tracy Gay, the Director of Client Services for the Wichita Family Crisis Center, Shannon Wilson, Assistant District Attorney for the Central County Sheriff's, uh, Central County District Attorney's Office, Lieutenant Keith Allen with the Central County um, Sheriff's Office, Kathy Williams, Executive Director for the Wichita Area Sexual Assault Center, Jan Jarman, Assistant City Prosecutor for the City of Wichita, Heather Blatton, um, with the Kansas Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence, Tina Peck, who is the Program Coordinator for Ascension via Christie Forensic Nursing, Kristen Gill, who is the Support Services Major with the Cedric County Division of Emergency Communications, and Lieutenant Jason Stevens with the Wichita Police Department's Domestic Violence and Sex Crimes Unit. I think I speak on behalf of the assessment team that this journey we have been on with this project has been one of growth for all of us. We came into this thinking and we knew what we each other did, but discovered that even though we knew a lot, we did not know everything. The passion and commitment that all the assessment team put into this project is unparalleled, and new partnerships and friendships came about through this process that drives us to a common goal, to better serve victims of domestic and sexual violence in a trauma-informed and victim-centered manner. For a brief background on the assessment, as well as why this collaboration is important, we have this morning Archie Kress, who is a member of the Kansas Governor's Advisory Council on Domestic and Sexual Violence Response. We also have Dorothy Stuckey Halley, who is the Director of Victim Services for the Attorney General's Office. Kit Lambert, the Executive Director for StepStone. Christy Barton, our Assessment Coordinator. Lieutenant Jason Stevens, who will speak on behalf of the Wichita Police Department. Mark Bennett, our District Attorney with the Central County District Attorney's Office. And Deputy Chief Jose Salcedo with the Wichita Police Department and Colonel Brian White with the Central County Sheriff's Department. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this huge step that we're taking. Um, I represent the Advisory Council for the Improving Criminal Justice Response Grant. Um, so Kansas Department of Corrections, the Kansas Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence, the Kansas Attorney General's Office, um, the Kansas Governor's Grants Program, and the Office of Judicial Administration all have representatives on the Advisory Council. So coming together, uh, to propose this grant, there were two big projects that we were looking at. So I want to talk a little bit about those. One, we were looking at updating curricula for domestic violence response and wanting to make sure that across the state of Kansas, we had comprehensive response. So from 911 call takers, law enforcement, community-based advocates, system-based advocates, and corrections, that we were all working together to provide that consistent response to victims of domestic violence who were interacting with the criminal justice system in some way. Um, this grant proposed to update that curriculum and to create a sexual assault curriculum as well. So these different entities, we had subcommittees from across the state with subject matter experts from um, several of those different disciplines that met to update the domestic violence curriculum and create the sexual assault curriculum. Um, those trainings, we had to train the trainer and trainings have been rolling out under that grant and will continue to do so until the end of September. Um, so hopefully you'll hear more about that in Wichita as we're looking to really inundate this community with those trainings. The other piece, so that's one piece, the other piece of this grant was to really look at pilot communities who were going to show what response to domestic violence and sexual violence could look like. We wanted to find communities that had existing community, coordinated community response teams who already had folks that were coming together in a meaningful way, but we wanted to have communities who had um, a college or university that had a uh, military base who had different responses to victims of domestic and sexual violence um, so that we could see that comprehensive response. Our goal also was to find communities that had a higher than average rate of sexual assault and rate of domestic violence. Um, so we're really excited when Wichita stepped forward and said we're, we're willing to really look at domestic and sexual violence because initially we were looking at two different communities and so to have one that was willing to take such a big step on both of these issues was really heartening for us. Um, unfortunately, at the time, Wichita ranked number 12 in reports of sexual violence. Also, one of the hats that I wear is, a, is chair of the Governor's Domestic Violence Fatality Review Board. And unfortunately, Wichita leads homicides and domestic violence in our state year after year. And so to be looking at both these responses to domestic and sexual violence in this community is a really exciting thing. Um, so when, when this community said that they were willing to step up and talk about what, what are we doing, really auditing these different um, 
entities and then come together to build on that foundation is a really exciting thing. So from the advisory council, I want to say we are very, very excited to see this project come together, but also know that this is just a foundation for this community with where we go from there. So thank you for coming and thank you for the work that Kit Lamberts from um, Stepstone, she's the executive director at Stepstone, will be telling you more about applying for this process and what this has looked like. This morning I'm speaking not only as the executive director of Stepstone, but also the chair of our local CCR. The members of the CCR are listed in the information we sent to you. Beginning in 2013, the CCR was founded with the purpose of providing problem solving and service enhancement to survivors of both domestic and sexual violence. From the beginning, this group provided training to area medical professionals, developed materials to be used by law enforcement personnel in investigations of domestic and sexual violence, developed a new way to respond to increased calls at the area domestic violence shelters, which were resulting from the initial piloting of the use of the lethality assessment. More importantly, the CCR meetings opened communication between advocacy and criminal justice system components. The idea of a safety and accountability audit was discussed by the CCR early in our existence, and in 2016, we applied for a grant to do that, but we were denied. So when we were approached to apply for funding through the ICE JAR grant by the advisory committee and the Kansas Governor's Grants Program, we were excited to have the opportunity to collaborate. Stepstone has served as the fiscal agent for managing the grant funds, which allowed us to hire a coordinator, and the rest now is history. Good morning. I'm Christy Barton. I'm an assistant professor of criminal justice at Newman University here in Wichita, Kansas. I also work as a crime analyst for the Office of the District Attorney, and I had the distinct honor of serving as the assessment or audit coordinator on behalf of the Wichita Sedgwick County Coordinated Community Response Team. I came to this project armed with more than 15 years of experience working in the Wichita Sedgwick County community with criminal justice professionals, with law enforcement professionals, with my friends in advocacy, my friends in forensic nursing. Just a little bit about the process. We began by assembling a team of experts and you have before you today, without a doubt, a team of experts collectively. They have over 70 years of experience working in Wichita, Sedgwick County, Kansas, providing services to victims and survivors of sexual and domestic violence. Armed with my experts, both in survivor advocacy, emergency communication, forensic nursing, law enforcement and prosecution, we began this process by going to the source. We met with survivors, survivors who are in Wichita, who had received help from our institutions or our agencies, survivors who had not received any help. And we asked them at the very beginning, what works and what doesn't work in Wichita, Sedgwick County, Kansas. And they, they so bravely provided us with valuable guidance, insight, and told us what is really happening in Wichita, Sedgwick County, Kansas. And also provided to us some ideas on what we could do better in Wichita, Kansas. After meeting with these brave survivors, the team began working together to map institutional responses. That is to outline what agencies do in our community when there is a disclosure or a report of domestic or sexual violence. Armed with these maps, we went in as experts and looked at the maps for moments, critical impact points for victims and survivors of domestic and sexual violence. And we asked ourselves, what more do we need to know? How can we identify the relevant facts, the credible information in our community? The process of getting information was arduous at best. This team conducted more than 50 hours of field observations with the Wichita Police Department. We did ride-alongs with patrol officers, seeing what really happens when officers respond to a report of sexual or domestic violence. This team went to the city of Wichita and watched the domestic violence docket to the Sedgwick County District Court watching the protection order docket. We even went to 911 and watched what happens when a call is made to 911. Notably, this team looked at more than 50 different forms and reports and was able, with the work provided by the Wichita Police Department, to review more than 100 different criminal cases that involve domestic and sexual violence here in Sedgwick County. During this process, we were able to accomplish so much. Not only did we identify the best practices, or the really good stuff that's happening in Wichita, 
but we also were able to enhance existing training. We were able to improve the lethality assessment program that the Wichita Police Department has been so efficiently and effectively utilizing for some time now. And we were able to improve communication, communication between all the agencies that provide services in our community. The process is outlined in the report. And the report sets forth the obstacles that we found. There were many, many good things we found, but this process, this quantitative process, where we went out and we talked to people and we watched people do their job, it was about finding the obstacles, the problematic areas. Armed with that information, the team of experts rather put together some recommendations, recommendations for ways to improve what we already do so well. We implore you as a team to read the report. It speaks for itself. And we ask you to make sexual and domestic violence a priority in Wichita, Kansas. It's been a priority for all of us for a long time. And it's about time it becomes a priority for all of us in Wichita, Kansas. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the audit team and the hard work they did. I think the number of folks here and the, and the organizations they each represent uh, speak well of Wichita and our commitment to attending to these types of cases, these types of issues. We have a lot of folks over here who represent a lot of people who work in this environment, uh, who work on these types of cases, who serve victims, uh, prosecute the cases, investigate the cases, and I think um, we're lucky in Wichita to have this many committed individuals who are ready and willing to uh, devote their careers to this type of work. Uh, the, the team, though, and the, impor the important work they did in the report that's now before you uh, identifies not only the very good things that we've done historically, but uh, provides us with a, a framework for moving forward and improving upon uh, the services already being, being provided to, to victims. Um, like many things right now in any sort of, any sort of criminal justice uh, analysis, resources uh, becomes one of the primary issues. And, the, and, and so not only does it help us self-identify and, and understand where we need to improve, it's also going to be a very valuable tool for the policymakers, the county commission, the city council, the state legislature, people who, frankly, decide how money is spent that's available to these law enforcement officials, the advocacy for folks, the prosecutors, the cops, uh, to go forward. We rely upon those individuals to uh, appropriately provide resources so that we have enough courtrooms, we have enough officers on the street, we have enough CSIs and advocates and uh, prosecutors to prosecute the cases. So this work is not only good in terms of just a, a good self-assessment, seeing where we are, seeing where we need to improve, but it's also going to be a useful tool for the folks who uh, decide, frankly, how the money is spent so that we can do the jobs that we do. Uh, finally, I think that the, the overall takeaway from this is that we, do, we have done historically a remarkably good job in Wichita, but at the same time, uh, I, I hope really the real takeaway is for victims out there, those who have been victims and those who unfortunately might be victims in the future, that they see that the professionals in Wichita who are again devoted to this type of work uh, take it seriously enough and have taken it seriously enough to self-assess, to self-reflect uh, and decide what are we doing, not just you know, patting ourselves on the back say we've got it right, but take the time and this Herculean effort to see what we could do better. Uh, and hopefully that sends a message to the victims of domestic violence that we not only you know, care about the case that happened last night, but we're trying to do more so that we can prevent future cases. And unfortunately, if cases do occur, that they will get the very best service available to them in this community. So I, I th again, applaud the audit team for their, uh, their tremendous work. I thank specifically Christy Barton for the, the work she did putting this, this program together. And I thank all of you for being here and hopefully sending a message to uh, the community that how seriously we take sexual and domestic violence in this community. Thank you. As he said, I'm Lieutenant Jason Stevens from the Wichita Police Department. And I would just want to say on a personal note uh, how proud I am of the work that, uh, that the team has done on this project. It, it's been a, a very uh, difficult and long journey. A lot of uh, hours spent uh, working on this project. And on a personal level, too, uh, how proud I am to have been a part of that. I want to stress that the Wichita Police Department has dedicated itself to working with uh, all of our partners from other agencies, uh, nonprofit organizations, to provide the best service to our community that we possibly can, and to improve our existing procedures when it uh, comes to domestic violence and sexual violence. With that goal in mind, we voluntarily participated in this project, this assessment, 
uh, to improve the quality of the services that not only we uh, provide to the community, but how we interact with all of our partners in that endeavor. And I want to say this has benefited the Wichita Police Department greatly. The Domestic and Sexual Violence Community Safety Assessment Project has benefited us in ways that, uh, that I can't even begin to describe. But in short, we're dedicated to effectively working with the community to ensure the safety of victims of domestic violence and sexual violence. And that's the end goal. It's essential for us to, uh, as a department, to review all of the processes involved in the investigation of our cases and to make the necessary changes uh, as they come up or as they're recognized. I want to say policing is a very constantly evolving profession. And the Wichita Police Department has dedicated itself to keeping up with all the modern techniques and standards which participating in this assessment was intended to accomplish ultimately. This assessment has strengthened partnerships between all of the various organizations involved when it comes to serving victims in our community of domestic and sexual violence. As the assessment has outlined, there are things that the Wichita Police Department and the audit team has recognized that all of us can improve, but specifically the Wichita Police Department in general. It identified some staffing issues as a potential area for improvement which confirmed some of the conclusions that our staffing study that was commissioned by the department in 2016 uh, came up with. Next, our assessment identified a need to improve the flow of information about protection orders to officers in, in the field while they're investigating these cases in real time. Additionally, there's been a, recogniz a recognition, a recognition, sorry, or the recognition that there is a need for training on domestic and sexual violence topics for officers, particularly victim-centered and trauma-informed approaches. And finally, communication can always be improved between our investigators, our community-based advocates, and victims about safety and resources. So moving forward, our department is working with internal and external partners to address the areas of improvement listed in this assessment. The first phase of the staffing study was approved by City Council and efforts to hire additional officers are currently underway. Any future plans involving the implementation of other phases in that study are still under review. The department is also working with the Wichita Police Department and Sheriff Records Divisions to implement plans to equip and train our own records personnel so that they will have the ability to not only access but also disseminate protection order information to the patrol officers while they're investigating cases in real time. Our training bureau is doing research and searching for appropriate and relevant training curriculums that will meet the goals that were outlined in the study as well. And to improve communication and connection to victims to community-based advocates, our de department is revising our victim resource sheet that officers provide to the victims in the field and our detectives will also be able to utilize that same information to disseminate information to our victims. I, uh, I've been, uh, I was part of the CCR uh, when this conversation uh, first came up about this review uh, and um, this team of professionals from across uh, numerous disciplines um, should be applauded for the effort that they have made in this uh, very careful examination. You see, when this conversation first came up, um, what we knew at that time was that we were going to look at what we did and we were going to publicly tell the community uh, where gaps were and how we could improve. And uh, sitting in that room initially, uh, when we were having this conversation about taking on this assessment, uh, it was resounding that we needed to do this and that we wanted to do this. So I just want to, to make sure that everyone is very aware that this self-examination uh, of where gaps might uh, exist with the services and things that uh, obviously that we're doing right, but the areas where we can improve uh, was, a, was a task uh, that, that everybody wanted to take on. Uh, and it was a very daunting task, um, but everybody jumped in. Um, 
uh, as a sex crime detective myself uh, earlier in my career. Uh, we also know that, um, that providing victim services is a collaborative effort. We all have a piece of the pie, um, but we can't carry the load alone. And as you can see from the professionals that are sitting uh, around the room, um, we have to work together. And I think sometimes when we're working towards those efforts, um, we, we uh, sit in our office and work on the paperwork that's in front of us, um, but sometimes we don't recognize uh, how we work together and how we can be more efficient. And that was an important part of this as well. Uh, this community is very um, uh, fortunate to have the CCR that was established long before this assessment took place that provided the groundwork so that this, this assessment could occur. Um, I, I want to close with saying that um, I'm very proud of the work that was done. It was a very um, careful examination of the services that were provided and uh, not only was it that examination but it was also provided um, a look to the future on how we can improve what we do. Thank you. Tim Potter for the Wichita Eagle. One question I have uh, for somebody from the PD. And he's, he, uh, Lieutenant Stevens said that there were efforts underway to uh, add officers. At this point, can you discuss any specific additions uh, in terms of numbers and uh, uh, there can be a little more specific about that at this point? Or? And the honest answer is no, I don't have those numbers. I do know just in general terms that the first phase of our staffing study has been authorized and approved by the city council, but there's two other phases that I, I personally don't have knowledge or information about. That would be a better question for uh, someone else, I th unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, the staffing study phase one called for 32 spots. Uh, we filled 16 out of the 32. We still need to uh, add nine officers to the field. Uh, we need to uh, add six detectives to investigations, uh, two of which will go to domestic violence, uh, sex crimes, and one sergeant. And then, you know, I don't know what phase two is, but that's phase one. One other question, and anybody can answer this. Is there, particularly with staffing, it costs money, and so, is there any specific plans that you can mention at this point about asking for funding from who or provides that funding? I'm talking about P, of course. <coughs> okay, <back up>. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically the, the the staffing study was commissioned by by PD and it was provided to to uh, the decision makers. Uh, and they have to decide. So uh, they've approved phase one, and there's, we're still talking about the additional two phases. Uh, any other questions before I sit down? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say one thing in that regard, because so, otherwise every single person could get up here and talk about their angle of this. But that's what I was mentioning before. Everybody has their own funding stream, funding source. Some are strictly governmental, some are grant funded, etc. But this study helps each individual organization go to their funding source, whether it's the court system who has to go to the county commission and say, you know, there's been this recommendation, but the judges can't go build another courtroom. Um, they need the county commission or they'll need the county to uh, you know, accommodate that. If the police need more, more officers in the street, the sheriff needs more detectives or whatever it may be, this study then helps that, that organization go to their um, the, the folks who control the purse strings. And again, a lot of this is going to be grant funded. A lot, excuse me, a lot of these organizations sitting, sitting before you, you utilize grant funds or um, some sort of governmentally uh, tied money. This, fun, this study helps in that regard as well. So there's not one entity or one push. We're going to have a cam capital campaign next month to accommodate all this. Everybody kind of has their own thing. But this study helps uh, illuminate the needs uh, both individually <coughs> and across the, the spectrum. And Tim, if I, if I may add, it's, it's an ecosystem. So if I add detectives, it actually creates a demand on the prosecution side, both city and, and if we add more officers, then they're, they're going to be generating not just domestic violence cases, they're going to be generating other cases. So it affects the entire system. 
I can just add from the advisory council, one of the things that was important to us about this report is that it didn't just outline, here's the additional funding we need to really make an impact in the community, but how do we stir what we got? And I think when you see these incredible folks who are working together and had started the project with some really great relationships, improving those relationships and looking at how do we use our resources in ways that really come together to maximize those impacts, I think this community has shown some really incredible steps forward on that that we'll just continue to see grow. So I, I wanna make sure that that piece doesn't get lost in the conversation that we're having about resources, because we could have that resource conversation for a whole long time. Thanks.